Good evening and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. Tonight is the night that we begin our journey of Lent, the journey towards the cross, the resurrection, and to Easter Sunday. Tonight is the night that we confront our own mortality and we confess our sins before God here within a community of faith. Now, the practice of marking ourselves with ashes is a tradition, a ritual that goes all the way back to the story of Job, who in his time of grief and of reflection and of despair, he covered himself in ashes and sat in ash cloth. So there will be a time later in the service we will invite you forward, and you'll have the opportunity to receive the mark of the cross on your forehead or on your hand during a time of prayer. We're so honored to get to celebrate this night here with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Lord, we thank you so much for your presence here among us and with our brothers and sisters who are marking this night all around the world. We ask that you be present here with us. Open our eyes to see who you are calling us to be. Lord, how you are challenging us to focus on you, of your work, of your mission, and of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able and let us sing together our opening hymn. Sunday's palms are Wednesday's ashes as another Lent begins. Thus we kneel before our Maker in contrition for our sins. We have our baptismal pledges in rebellion gone astray. Now returning, seek forgiveness, grant us pardon. God this day. We have failed to love our neighbors, their offenses to forgive, have not listened to their troubles, nor have cared just how they live. We are jealous, proud, impatient, Loving over much our things May the yielding of our failings Be our Lenten offerings We are hasty to judge others Blind to proof of human need and our lack of understanding demonstrates our inner greed. We have wasted earth's resources, want and suffering we've ignored. Come and cleanse us and restore us, make new hearts with in us, Lord. You may be seated. The first scripture for this evening will be from Psalm 22 and will be read throughout the service. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why, why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they cried out and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. At this time, we'll invite any children forward for the children's sermon.
glad you're here. I have a lot of stuff. You know, that's what we do in children's ministry. We have a lot of stuff. Well, tonight we're going to experience the imposition of ashes, which simply means that you're going to have an opportunity to have ashes put on your forehead or on your hand to remind you that God made us from dust. That's pretty amazing God, isn't it? Do you have a question, Elizabeth? Um, is it going to hurt? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's gonna, it'll feel just like this. Now, I'm going to tell you about all that stuff. Okay, so we do this on Ash Wednesday, which begins a Christian period of preparing for Easter, the celebration of the resurrection or raising from death to, to life of Jesus. During Lent, Christians often try to become closer to God, and they do it in many different ways. I like to think of it as a journey that we are all on together. What we're going to ask you to do, along with Miss Monica and me, is to focus on God's gigantic love for us. We put together some tools for you for our journey to Easter. We know that you can lead your family because we've seen you do it before. So let me just tell you what you're going to get in your little bag. And for those people that are at home viewing online, if you want a, a children's packet, a children's Lenten um, packet, you just let us know. You can email Monica or me, and we will make sure that you get one. So in your little packet, what you're going to get is you're going to get a calendar for all 46 days of Lent. There's, and it's kind of confusing. There's really 40 days of Lent. The Sundays don't count, but we gave you every single day because we like everything. Okay, and so it gives you suggestions on things you can do to get closer to God. Now, you may not be able to get to do all 46 of these, and that's okay, okay? But um, an example would be today, which is Ash Wednesday, this calendar tells us, well, let's talk about the meaning of ashes on this day. So what you're going to do is you're going to, this is a placemat, and you're going to have this on your table, okay? And every day there's a suggestion of something to do, and you're going to lead your family. Okay, so you have your little candle, because what does the candle remind us of? Yes, it reminds us that God is with us, whether we see him or not. Okay, so <clears throat> what you're going to get in your bag is you got your candle. You're going to have a glue stick, because there's four, also 46 words. So every day you'll have a word. Like, let's say you're sitting at breakfast, and you go, oh, today's word is dust. You can talk about that word. What does that mean? Like, to your mom or dad, it might mean... You can sweep. Can you come to my house? Yeah, I like that. That's, I, was, I was actually going to talk about that. So you might talk about dust and how dusty or undusty your house is. Um, the next day is grow. The other thing you could do is you could draw a picture or you could do, like, you could do the, the word. Like, for instance, grow. You could show, you know, I, I'm growing. This is how tall I got. So basically it's a time to just be together and talk and draw yourself closer to God, kind of to be quiet. Okay, so you got these little strips here, and I'll show you what they look like. Well, oh, so every day you, you have all this, these little strips in your bag, and you'll put together one day as friend, okay? And then you'll, you'll glue it together with your glue stick, and by the end of Lent, you'll have a 46-piece, um, what do you call these, garland that you could put on your... Um, mantle, or you could just, you could hang it in your room, but um, it's just to cause us to think more about God and how much God loves us. You think you can do that at your house? Yeah? Okay, and so also in your bag is the blessing balm, and I don't know if you've seen this or not, um, Elizabeth, because I think you're fairly new to Sunday school and church, right? Or this one. Well, I'm really glad that you came up here. Well, let me show you what we do with this. What we do at the end of Sunday school is you look at me, and I tell you, you are a blessing, and God loves you, okay? And that's what you're going to do with your family. Can we do that? Great. Well, I'm going to send this bag home with you. And again, if you're listening online and you don't... Um, how, you, you're wondering how you're going to get all this stuff, we will get it to you. We will mail it to you. We will bring it to you. Just let us know. Okay, let's pray. 
Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of Jesus and what he means to all of us. We thank you for the families that are present and those that are online. We ask that you continue to bless them and bring them closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, in, in a few moments, we will uh, join together in singing the Lord's Prayer, and after which the ushers will be coming forward to, to pass the plate. Now, if you want to give a regular offering tonight, that, of course, is okay. We'll help the ministries and the missions of this church. However, if you would like your offering tonight to specifically go to the relief efforts in the Ukraine, all you have to do is indicate that on the envelope, the check, or your online gift, and it will go to UMCOR, which is United Methodist Committee on Relief, and 100% of the gifts that are given to UMCOR go directly to the places in need, and tonight's offering will be going directly to the Ukraine. Let us pray. Most merciful and loving God, we give you thanks for this evening, for this place and your presence with us. We give you thanks for the ritual of this service, for the reminder that you breathed life into dust and created humanity. And from that dust, we shall return. That our life here on this earth is temporary, but that our life with you is eternal. During this period of Lent, be with us and help us to focus on you and your love for us. Let us open our hearts and listen for that still, quiet voice as you whisper your reminder of love and grace and comfort to all of us. Lord, be with those in the Ukraine, those who are helping. Lord, be with this world. Help us to move together, to bend the arc of the universe closer to justice and respond to your call to help the least, the last, and the lost, and to leave this place to share that grace with a world in need. In Jesus' name, amen. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who seek me, see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Our Father in heaven, holy is his name, your kingdom come, your will be Today, our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever. 
the kingdom and the power and the glory of yours Ushers may now please come forward. Dust and ashes touch our face, mark our failure and our failing. Holy Spirit, come. Walk with us tomorrow, take us as disciples, washed and wakened by your calling. Take us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sands. Bring us Ashes choke our tongue in the wasteland of depression. Holy Spirit, come, walk with us tomorrow through all gloom and grieving to the paths of resurrection. Take us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sands, bring us living water, Holy Spirit. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax, it has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, 
Do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me.
To me, Ash Wednesday is kind of like an intervention. Uh, you know what an intervention is? Uh, probably do. One of those times where a family gathers or friends gather or people gather in some secret place maybe and, and they call someone to meet them there. We're going to have a party or we want to talk about this or a vacation, whatever. And when the person shows up, they discover, oh, it's not that at all. It's an intervention. They want to help me recover or get therapy or do better, whatever it might be. And we use that term. It's pretty common today to have interventions for people we love. And Ash Wednesday really is an intervention. It's a moment in our life where things just plain stop for a moment and we sing songs like we've sung today and read scriptures about the death of someone suffering. We, we look at ashes on our foreheads. It began this morning for our church very early. Uh, we had pastors here from 6 to 8 o'clock uh, putting ashes on people's foreheads, those who drove up and also up and down Main Street. Then at uh, between 11 and 1, happened again. Don't know how many we actually did, but many of them received those ashes. One group came, and Grant was part of that, came this way, and, and they put ashes on the forehead of those who were working in the street. And they called their friends, come on over. They're putting ashes, ash with you for us. And so that was kind of cool to see that. Uh, intervention in the oddest place in the middle of somebody working, uh, wearing uniforms, digging holes in the ground, and interventions of people showing up in church. Because it's Ash Wednesday, you're supposed to. It's Lent starting, it's time. So we're having an intervention. <clears throat> an intervention and we're stopping <coughs> for a moment. Our lives. We're stopping what we might normally do on Wednesday night. We're focusing on a different thing we normally focus on Wednesday night. And, you know, we're, we're thinking about for a moment that Jesus suffered for us. And this season moves toward a time of suffering and identification with our Lord that leads to Holy Thursday, the Last Supper, Good Friday, or Black Friday, Christ's death on the cross, and then, hey, the good news, Easter, Easter comes. I'm going to read a verse, another one more verse in a moment here, this Matthew 26, 41, but when I, before I do that, I want to talk for a second about a thing that I've experienced in my life off and on through the years. And that is instructions from Ikea. Now, anybody here familiar with Ikea and the instructions that come in the box with the stuff? First, I'll think you can never get all that stuff in this box. But somehow they do. And the instructions are almost as thick as what's in the box because it's very complex to do. It's very hard to do to put all those screws in the right place and little pieces of wood and everything else to, to put something together when you're done and you're finished. And it looks, eventually it looks like the picture that's on the box. You hope if you spend enough time following the instructions. Here, the instructions properly. Now, I'm not an instruction person. Rhonda, don't say anything. I am not an instruction person, but with Ikea, I've learned you got to follow the instructions. You cannot do it. You have to do every little bolt, every little piece of wood, every little part of that, or you're not going to have it done when you're done, and it won't work, and it'll break, and it'll fall apart. That's the way Ikea works. It's a trick they play on all of us who fall for that story at the Ikea store that says this is really cheap. They don't take into account the sweat labor that goes into it. Here's a verse, Matthew 26, 41, and it's instructions, instructions from Jesus, where it says, watch and pray so that you may not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus said that in the Garden of Gethsemane while he's praying to God about the cup, not why I will, but thine be done. His disciples are all hanging around, sleeping while that's going on. And he wakes them up. He has a little short momentary intervention in where they are, which is we're tired. It's been a long day, a long week, a long three years. And he stops them for a moment and says, watch and pray. The instructions are simple and they are clear. We just often don't do it. But the warning is if you don't, Ikea, if you don't do it right, you're not going to have the instrument like you want it. The bed's not going to, it's going to fall apart. It's not going to hang on the wall. And we really can't experience the Christian life like we probably want to experience it. Watch and pray so you may not fall into temptation. If you don't, if you don't, it will destroy you. You won't be what you want to be or what God wants you to be. And so we offer once a year intervention 
Please come. We're going to watch and pray. Ashes, repentance, God forgive us. Direct our lives in a new way. We want to follow you. We want to be Christians. Watch and pray lest temptation destroy you. Ash Wednesday is the first day of Lent. Uh, just before Ash Wednesday, for some reason, we have a big party or some do called Mardi Gras. Uh, traditional guidelines uh, allow that, I guess, somehow, because after that, we're supposed to be good. And so that's kind of how the rules go. And historically, that we can be really bad just before we're really good. Get ready, because you can't be good after or before Lenten season. It's kind of funny that the world can be like that, but it is. Uh, often there's an event called Shrove Tuesday, which we don't do here necessarily. We can. Pancakes are often served. The idea there is that we're going to have pancakes on Tuesday because we've got to suffer the rest of this time. Let's have a good time before we suffer. That's kind of the idea of the pancakes. We've got to use all that stuff up because we can't eat it next week. No syrup for you or whatever it might be that we're sacrificing. So we have that kind of thing as well. As we try to understand what this event is in our lives, this understanding of salvation founded in the cross and suffering of Christ. The verses you heard read already in the service are from Psalm 22. They're called Messianic prophecy, meaning this is what Jesus went through on the cross, prophesied long before it ever happened. And those words are very graphic and descriptive of what it is to be on a cross. I'm going to show you a picture, a very simple one. It's called a crucifix. You know that. Some may have one in their home, maybe jewelry for you. But I think sometime we might miss this part of what it is to be and experience Christ fully. Uh, many times in Protestants, our crosses are empty. Uh, they're often beautiful, maybe decorative. And I have decorative crosses in my home on a wall. Uh, I can wear one on occasion. We have, they're, and that's good. But they're not always in Protestant churches. There's usually nobody on them. Uh, and the Catholic Church often has what you see in front of you there. Uh, if you're online, you're watching that online. What's called a crucifix. This idea that there was someone who was the only perfect man who ever lived who was crucified for our lives. There's no full, complete intervention in your life and mine without somehow contemplating the death of Jesus Christ, what that means for us. Max Lucado talks about the cross like this. He says the cross it rests on the timeline of history like a compelling diamond. Its tragedy summons sufferers. Its absurdity attracts all cynics. Its hope lures the searchers. History has idolized it, despised it, gold-plated it, and burned it, worn it, and trashed it. History has done everything but ignore it. How could you ignore such a piece of lumber? Spend it on the beams on its beams is the greatest claim in history, a crucified carpenter claiming to be God on earth. Think about the uniqueness of what it is to be a Christian that centered in this idea of someone crucified for you and me. And it puts a light on what Lent really is. Where we might give up something or begin doing something or change something or repent or confess or change our lives, or allow God to change our lives, or come to an altar and say, it's Wednesday night, I'm going to come and I'm going to kneel. And so he put ashes on my head and tell me, repent for the gospel. Repent, the gospel is here with us and what that means for you and me. We can neglect this. There was a man hanging on a cross and he suffered. The Bible says, scarcely would someone die for a righteous person but God proves his love toward us that we were yet sinners. He died for the ungodly. There we see in that picture. So that's what love, at least how God explains, how God wants us to, under, how God reveals it to us. That's what God, that's what love looks like. That is how God expresses his love. We see in that a rich, deep, overwhelming, overcoming, saving love for you and me. And that we can kneel before. I said, God, I want you to put some ashes on my head. I want to repent. Watch and pray, lest temptation destroy you. And so here is again the intervention that interrupts your life and mine in the middle of whatever's happening in our world, whatever's taking place around us, whatever we're experiencing, whatever we are have gone through ourselves, or whatever we might go through next. 
We have that promise. Psalm 22, a few verses again. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saying, saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? The words that Jesus said on the cross are said here hundreds of years before he actually said them in that place. I'm a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him. And that place we open our hearts. So, so that's this story that we grapple with. Either we're searching for it or we're living it or we found it or we need to renew it or we need to simply refocus on it, which is the story of the Lenten season to be able to do that and make that decision. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Somewhere in this ironic connection between uh, the cross, uh, Ash Wednesday, God's love for us, somewhere in that connection we discover what it is for God to love us, and here we find the place to say, I want to turn toward the God who gives me this promise in me. There's a song called In the Cross. It's a very simple one. It says, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Talked earlier about the simple instructions that God gives us. We can't miss what it means for a crucified God to come to us in that unique way. We can't miss what it is to watch and pray in times like we are experiencing tonight. We can't miss what it is to repent and say, God, give me grace that I might live a new life, new joy, new peace in my life. As Grant pointed out earlier, the idea of ashes is from a Bible verse, telling us a sense of what it is to be so low we are ready to repent and turn toward God. And, and that's the good news that we do that, and God simply forgives, gives grace, makes new, expresses his love toward us, intervenes in our life, and points us in a new direction. It's a reminder of human, human mortality for us to be aware and think that we too will die one day. We too have brokenness. We, we too in our lives have needs. We too have limitations. That's who we are. That's human nature being human. It's an awareness of human sin. It helps us see that. That's, if, if Jesus had to die on the cross to save me, then sin must be a pretty big thing. A big deal, and, and I'm taking it seriously. When someone puts ashes on my head, says, repent and believe the good news, what that means for you and me. It's the beginning for us of a season of repentance marked by worship, self-sacrifice, focus on reconciling with God, confession, this confession that culminates in Holy Week and all that's going to happen then, each of that follows. One of the things that we're offering this year that's going to be a little bit different for us is we're going to offer, beginning next Sunday, the first, the first Sunday of Lent, offer people a journal. In that journal, you'll be able to each day go through your experiences in the Lenten season. With that journal, there's also a reading guide where you can read through the Gospel of John, which is what our message series is about in this season, Encounters with Jesus in the Gospel of John. You'll be able to read each day. Uh, one, one part of the chapter to finally end with the entire chapter toward Easter time. You'll be able to pray, uh, write down what you're experiencing, and simply join us together in walking through the season by not just trying to give up something, but how to begin, I'm going to begin this practice of watching and praying with God. It's facing that in the joy of what will become and will be. Back to the beginning. The beginning is, this is really an intervention. And where are you in our lives right now? Because when you face the cross, as we talk about here today, the crucifix of Christ, where he gave his life for us, when we do that, when we see that, experience that, then we have to see ourselves in a different way. And there we turn toward God, the uniqueness of what Ash Wednesday is for you and me. Would you pray with me, please? 
Heavenly Father, we have to admit that we don't always watch and pray as we should. We're distracted by the world we live in. We turn to other places. We miss, God, what you might do in our lives. But today, God, for a moment, we, we think we have it right. On this Sunday, Ash, this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, we turn toward you, Lord, and we invite you to enter our hearts and our lives. Prepare us to receive this, this, this special moment of ashes on our forehead. And just lead us through the season and beyond. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Someone once said that if our lives are a strip of cloth with baptism or baptism on one side and death on the other, then Ash Wednesday is a day where we pinch those two ends together. In a moment, the ushers are going to guide you so you can stand or kneel at the altar rails and receive the imposition of ashes. But first, let us pray. God, you created us from dust, and for that, we are grateful. We pray that these ashes will be a sign of repentance for us, a call to live differently, and a reminder of our mortality, a reminder that only you can make life from death. As we journey towards Easter, help us to remember that. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. God of grace and of peace, Lord, we thank you for your presence here with us this night. And we thank you for the call that you place on all of our lives to turn to your voice and to follow you. And we thank you for your love and your mercy and your forgiveness that always meets us where we are. Lord, guide us this night to show we could, so we can tell more people about you and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. words of Jesus again in the garden, couldn't you keep watch with me for just one hour? Watch and pray that you may will not fall into temptation. It is willing, but the flesh is weak. Lent has begun. Amen. <laughs> 